The world under lockdown. In normally bustling New Delhi, birds sing out in deserted streets. There is no one at Greece's tourist hotspots. Tonight on 6 on your side at 10, a rare and powerful earthquake rocks the state from Twin Falls to Moscow and sends Treasure Valley residents scrambling for cover. From cracks in the street to other signs of damage, Boise, Idaho got lucky from a big quake centered just about 75 miles to the north and east. Oh my God, I'm not gonna see if Megan's got that one. I just worry about the beans. But it wasn't just one quake. The 6.5 in blue has also been followed by aftershocks, dozens of them. Aided or just a coincidence? After a magnitude 6.5 earthquake yesterday in Idaho, we asked a local seismologist if it is connected to the quake here in Utah two weeks ago. Floors, walls, our chandelier is shaking. Tobin says the west coast is being pulled north and compressed. It creates a rotational effect east to that part of Idaho, which instead of being squeezed, is actually being stretched and expanded. So far this year, we tragically lost Kobe Bryant. Sports has been canceled. The coronavirus has us isolated inside our own homes, and now an earthquake? Can we just start 2020 over? And I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. Some years are like this, and some years are calm, and you never know. This is Mecca after the Saudi authorities imposed a full lockdown. Islam's holiest site is always packed with pilgrims throughout the year. But these are extraordinary times. These farmers in eastern Kenya's Kitui County are running out of time. They were invaded by millions of desert locusts that used their farms to breed. Now their hopers are about to mature. And if the farmers don't kill them all before they develop wings, then this second generation of locusts that have already devoured tens of thousands hectares of vegetation across East Africa will cause even more devastation. Although locust invasions are nothing new, it's been decades since swarms of this size were seen in many affected countries. <laughs> The swarms in Kenya will be moving north. In the region, countries such as Ethiopia, Somalia, South Sudan, Eritrea and Djibouti will be hit hard as the locusts head toward the Arabian Peninsula. Some farmers are concerned that with the onset of coronavirus, many governments will divert resources meant to deal with the locusts. A locust swarm can cover hundreds of square kilometers. It's not uncommon for a swarm to be as big as the size of a major city. And one square kilometer can contain at least 40 million locust adults. What's more, in just a single day, these hungry insects can eat the same amount of food that 35,000 human beings would be capable of. The current desert locust outbreak took the countries in the Horn of Africa by surprise. Somalia hasn't seen this amount of locusts in the last 25 years. For Kenya, it's the worst outbreak in 70 years. The scale of the locust invasion has overwhelmed these countries. We start with breaking news. A 5.3 magnitude earthquake just hit an area that's just north of Yosemite. Right now, there are no reports of any injuries or damage. Again, a 5.3 magnitude earthquake this morning in central California. We'll continue to follow this story throughout the morning. A 5.3 magnitude earthquake hit near the California-Nevada border this morning at 736. The epicenter was 31 miles northeast.
More than a week after the Magna earthquake, aftershocks are still shaking the Salt Lake Valley. Just this morning, there was a pair of magnitude three aftershocks. They're the latest in a string of hundreds. And Bob, all that shaking is causing some anxiety for folks. And it shows that while the quake, uh, the rate of quakes is slowing, we'll likely continue to have aftershocks for a while. The 3.3 magnitude around 10.15 this morning was among over 30 aftershocks just Thursday. The floor jumped and lifted for a few seconds. There have been more than 560 aftershocks in just the last eight days. Most are too weak to be felt, but the 32 that reached a magnitude 3 or higher Definitely very nerve-wracking. Thursday's quakes moved east and closer to the surface, according to Keith Coper, who says it's common to feel on edge. Heightened anxiety can also cause so-called phantom quakes. When you feel shaking without an actual earthquake, Coper says it's all to be expected. It's creepy, right? says it's different from what happened here in Utah on March 18th. That was a magnitude 5.7, um, and that was what we call a normal earthquake, um, and that's where you have um, the earth being stretched apart. Who felt the shaking from that earthquake all the way down here in Utah are now wondering if the Idaho earthquake is somehow related to the earthquake we had two weeks ago in Magna. Two earthquakes, just a matter of weeks apart. And he says the two earthquakes are not related. He says it's sort of a coincidence. Make sure you look up tonight because it's expected to be the biggest and brightest supermoon of the year. The supermoon happens when there's a full moon that's closer to the Earth than it's normally. It's one of the world's largest coral systems made up of nearly 3,000 separate reefs and 900 islands. The Great Barrier Reef attracts huge numbers of tourists every year, but this underwater treasure is at risk of disappearing due to coral bleaching. Over the past two weeks, James Cook University has surveyed more than a thousand reefs. It found they were severely bleached in all three regions of the system and says it's more widespread than ever before. This is the third time it's happened in the past five years. If this continues and we're seeing these mass bleaching events every few years, there just will not be the opportunity for the corals to recover in between these major disturbances. It really is unprecedented. And when we think about what the Great Barrier gives Australia, it's its cultural heritage, it's iconic, um, and the tourism industry all of these facets we will lose instantly if we have another bleaching event of these magnitudes. The reef is highly vulnerable, not only to warming temperatures, but also pollution and coastal development. Of course, severe drought is intensifying bushfires. Rain, rain and more rain. After an unusually dry January and February, Southern California has been pummeled by a series of spring storms in late March and April. An unprecedented response to a virus unknown to the world just a few months ago. Now on nearly every continent, country and street. It's been called the crossroads of the world, but these days no one is going anywhere. New York, the center of American culture and commerce. Even the famously busy Grand Central Station is eerily quiet. During normal times, three quarters of a million people would pass through here each day. 
Italy ordered a national lockdown. Two days later, the World Health Organization made a rare declaration. We are deeply concerned both by the alarming levels of spread and severity and by the alarming levels of inaction. Most governments have decided, for now at least, drastic measures are necessary to save lives, no matter the cost. Many have implemented unprecedented lockdowns to slow the spread of the virus so healthcare systems aren't overwhelmed. Scientists say we're in uncharted territory.